I believe that we have experienced revival and reformation in our 10 days of prayer, that God in, His, in the Holy Spirit has provided us this avenue of united prayer where we can really seek the Lord because revival is only being provided by God in answer to our prayers. And so today our topic is revival and reformation in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father in heaven, may you speak once more to each one of us today as we end our 10 days of prayer as we bring you all the glory and the honor and as we have experienced your power that we can again listen to your word that still small voice of the holy spirit speaking to us so that we can not only have that revival but even reformation in our lives for your glory that will bring the very message of salvation in Jesus Christ to each and every one of us. Speak to us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8. Asked, and it shall be given. To you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You know, in this verse, we see an acrostic. These are the metaphors of prayer. But it is an acrostic, for A is for ask, S is for seek, and K is is for knock. Ellen White says in the Steps to Christ 93, prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse where are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence. So we see here, number one is ask, asking. These images of prayer, ask, means that there must be steadfastness in our prayer. Asking, seeking, and knocking. To ask is the supplication or presenting our needs to God. J.C. Ryle says, Prayer is the very light breath of true religion. It is the key that unlocks the treasury of promises and the hand that draws forth grace and help in time of need. Number two, it's seeking. It means seeking God's presence. Have you ever heard the phrase seeking God's face? It means you yearn for his presence or his face. So seeking God's face is the way of having access to God through prayer. Prayer is being at his holy presence. Therefore, it is like a face-to-face -face conversation, face-to-face -face communion. Since God is omnipresent, it speaks of proximity, not in the physical, but in the spiritual realm. Amen. A commentary says that I read... To seek is the openness and purity we beg him to respond to the need. And one pastor says it is brutally being brutally honest to God. Let the rest, seeking. It is the conscious effort to get through the natural means to get to God himself. It is talking to God in prayer and to constantly fix our thoughts toward God in all our experiences. And we can have that. In Colossians 3, 1, 2, it says, If you then be risen with Christ. Let me read that to us today. It's Colossians chapter 3. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on that right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on the things on the earth. You see, it is being attuned with God. It is being centered on heavenly themes it is prioritizing the most important thing it's making the main thing the main thing it's not a theoretical knowledge but a, it is an experiential knowledge 
about Jesus Christ and of Jesus Christ. It is a relationship with Him. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it is praying without ceasing. Pray without ceasing, he says. And Ellen White steps to Christ, he says, 93, prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order, what's this, to enable us to receive Him. Yes, it is even praying, Thy will be done. So prayer is a form of communion. It's a form of communication. And it's a two-way street. It is communion with a holy God that deepens, widens, sweetens, and strengthens your relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, we got two ways by which we can have that communion. Prayer is talking to God. And Bible study is God talking to man. Dwight Al Moody says, when I pray, I talk to God. But when I read the Bible, God is talking to me. I believe we should know better. What's this now? How to pray if we knew our Bibles better. And I would like to rephrase it also. If we knew the author of our Bibles. And that's Jesus Christ. Knowing Him. Knowing Him. As an experience in our Christian life. Oswald Chambers says, prayer is not getting things from God. That is the initial stage of prayer. It is getting into a perfect with communion with God. I tell him what I need, he says. I tell him what I know he knows in order that I may get to know it as he does. Hallelujah. And last is knocking. Have you ever thought why God tells us to knock? Have you ever gone to your, your friend's house and you know the car is there in the garage, in the, uh, in the, in the driveway, and you will be knocking and no one will be opening the door? Still, you would be persistently knocking. Why? Because you know that your friend is in the house. Knocking means that you know God is always there to listen to our prayers. And God is there to answer to our prayers according to His will. And according to his own power. It means also persistence in our prayers. It is an agonizing, uh, persevering prayer to God. I have this quote, Prayer puts you around the enfolding arms of omnipotence to experience his love, his care, his strength amid your weakness and find relief for your aching soul. So we got all of this spiritual devotion, Bible reading, Prayer and witnessing. And that's why we got this command in Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yes, we are bidden to go, to come to the throne of grace. Charles Spurgeon says, Doubt not his grace because of thy tribulation, tribulation, but believe that he loveth thee as much in seasons of trouble as in times of happiness. Just think of this experience that we have with this COVID-19. We got family members. We got church members who have been uh, uh, infected. And praise the Lord, there are the, the, many of them now have recovered. And we are praying for a complete recovery of those that are still there. But did you know that we have also a lot of uh, Seventh-day Adventist members all around the world, even here in North America and in Canada, who have passed away because of COVID-19. Yes, we, we were praying for healing. We were praying for recovery. But the bottom line is God's will be done. Yes, we, we would like a healing. But God says, I would like a resurrection. Oswald Chambers says, God's silences are His answers. If we only take as answers those that are visible to our senses, we are in a very elementary condition of grace. And if, say, for example, we got loved ones who have gone before or have died because of this coronavirus or anyone that we know. Uh, in Revelations 1, 17 and 18, it says, When I saw him, I, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have, the, what's this now, the keys of hell and of death. So we got that hope of resurrection. Those families who has, who get loved ones who passed away.
probably not even in this coronavirus, probably something that happened. There is a resurrection morning. That's the grand reunion day. That's our hope to get that faith in Jesus Christ. Because he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Number two, revival, your God-given sanctity. So number one is prayer, your God-given sanity. Revival, your God-given spirituality. That's what I mean. Revival, your God-given spirituality. One revival, Mark Finley says, and there are three elements in his book. He, he, he mentioned three. Bible study, prayer, and witnessing. Ephesians 5.18, it says, and I would like to read that again in, in my Bible, Ephesians 5.18, speaking about being filled with the Holy Spirit and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Yes, be filled with the Spirit. That's what we need. Why? Because we have to constantly be, uh, have that guidance from the Holy Spirit. That's why we have this a scripture reading that we have uh, read in Romans chapter 8, because those that are led by the Holy Spirit are children of God. And we cannot have the spiritual cross control because of our fallenness. It means that we are to be constantly being guided by the power of the Holy Spirit and guided also by the principles of His Word. We are living in the time of the end, Ellen White says, the fast fulfilling signs will times declare that time, the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. Yes, the Spirit of God is gradually put surely, but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the, God's grace. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, and we see this all around us now with this pandemic. The world is in a state of unsettled condition. There are calamities by land and sea. We got all of this that had been uh, in the news. Earthquakes, tsunamis, typhoons in the Philippines that we have been uh, called to help. Gave our donation and I just thank you for that donation that we have. The alarms of war are portentous. They forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. As I've said, always would say, we ain't seen anything yet. Dwight Al Moody again says, set yourself on fire with passion and people will come for miles to watch you burning. Yes, we need the fires of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in our hearts, fires of evangelism that we can share to God what we have known, what we have experienced in Jesus Christ. A revival and reformation must take place. Ellen White says, under the ministration of the Holy Spirit, revival signifies a renewal of the spiritual life. What's those descriptive words? Renewal of the spiritual life, a quickening of the powers of mind and heart, a resurrection from a spiritual death. Reformation signifies a reorganization. Once again, those descriptions of reformation. Reorganization of change in ideas and theories, habits and practices. Reformation will not bring forth the good fruit of righteousness unless it is connected with the revival of the Spirit. Yes, revival and reform. That's why we say not only revival, we don't only say reformation, but revival and reformation because they have to blend with each other in this work of preparing a people for that loud cry, for that seal of the Holy Spirit that will prepare us for the proclamation of the last warning message of Revelation 14, the three angels' message. Again, what's this? From Great Controversy 464, before the final visitation of God's judgment upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. Oh, I want to be a part of that. The spirit and power of God will be poured out upon his children. A.W. Tozer, a theologian scholar, says, when we have the Holy Spirit, watch this, we have all that is needed to be all that God desires us to be. In a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen. 
Remember in the Old Testament, uh, the, the children of God has been called to be watchmen on the walls of Zion. And we as seven that this has been called and summoned also to be watchmen in the walls of Zion. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import. What's this? The proclamation of the first, second, and third angels' messages. Listen now. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. And you know, the Holy Spirit is to animate and pervade the whole church. Purifying and cementing hearts. Upon us is laid a sacred charge. What is that sacred work, sacred responsibility? He says, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, that's the promise now, I am with you. Always, even unto the end of the world. Yes, that's why we need to have not only prayer, not only Bible study, but even witnessing. I saw jets of light shining from cities to villages. Ellen White says in Testimonies, Volume 9, page 28. And from the high places and low places of the earth, God's word was obeyed. And as a result, there were memorials for him in every city and village. Oh, we got here in this Houston and suburbs, jets of light shining from cities to cities. And I would like to think that this jet sublines is the cyber technology, is this wonders of technology that we can use. And a lot of our churches now, it has a common uh, uh, platform, not only Adventists, but even non-Adventists, uh, using Zoom Bible study, Zoom uh, virtual religious meeting, so that people could listen to God's word. But thank God we have. The gospel message, the last warning message of Revelation 14, we call it the three angels' message. When the reproach of indolence and slothfulness, listen again, shall have been wiped away from the church, Ellen White says, the spirit of the Lord will be graciously manifested. Did you get, did you get that? When the reproach of indolence and slothfulness, he says, shall be wiped away from the church, the Spirit of the Lord will be graciously manifested. The divine power will be revealed. Would you like the divine power? Would you like to have not only the baptisms, baptism of the Holy Spirit in the early reign, but also in the latter reign experience? Let's have to be the fire of evangelism. Because indolence and slothfulness, it says here, must be wiped away in order for us to receive the Holy Spirit. The light of truth will shine forth in clear, strong rays in us in the time of the apostles. Many souls will turn from error to truth. And mind you, even those closed uh, uh, doors, uh, the, the nations that are not open to missionaries, whether it be Adventist missionaries, Protestant missionaries, or Catholic uh, missionaries, they are closed. But if when we use, but if we use uh, this cyber technology, when we use Technology now, they can it can reach to any part of this world, whether they be close to missionaries or open to missionaries. And and even though our evangelists now cannot could not go to any parts of the world to preach the gospel uh, bodily, face to face, we can use this social media evangelism. Heavenly angels, this promise now, listen, have long been waiting for human agents to members of the church. To cooperate with them in the great work to be done. They are waiting for you. They are waiting for me. So vast is the field, Ellen White says. So comprehensive the design that every sanctified heart, remember that, sanctified heart will be pressed into service as an instrument of divine power. Yes, we are about to see the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 13. When worship of the beast and worship of the lamb will be clear among people. But we are to do our own work. In our own country, there is much to be done. There are many cities to be entered in one. It is the neglect. This is a heavy statement now. Listen. It is the neglect of Seventh-day Adventists to improve these providential opportunities that is hindering the advancement of the cause. My, that is a heavy statement. Yes, we are also 
uh, uh, praying, not only uh, reformation, not only revival, but we are also praying that we can be part of that loud cry. It says here in our Seventh-day Bible Bible commentary, Seventh-day Adventist Bible commentary, volume 7, 984, it says, I have no specific time of which to speak when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will take place. And then why it says, when the mighty angel will come down from heaven, that's in Revelation 18, and unite with the third angel in closing up the work for this world. My message is that our only safety is in being ready for the heavenly refreshing. And what is that heavenly refreshing? It's the anointing, it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As the third message swells to a loud cry as great power and glory attend the closing work, the faithful people of God, listen now, the faithful people of God will partake of that glory. Yes, I would like to be a part of that loud cry. If you are waiting for that loud cry uh, uh, event uh, in order for us to receive the lettering power of the Holy Spirit, we will be late. Why? Because the very reason why we need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain, it is because you will be participating, I will be participating in the loud cry, and I will be receiving also the end time seal of the Holy Spirit. It is the latter rain which revives and strengthens them to pass through the time of trouble. What is this time of trouble in our Adventist eschatology, our Adventist understanding of uh, last day events? We have the small time of trouble, which is uh, the mark of the beast, Sunday low, and we got also the great time of trouble, which is the seven last plagues. But when that happens, the great time of trouble, we already have the close of probation. If only I could let you see my diagram here. My, it says here that the gospel of proclamation is being done right now. We are heading to that small time of trouble. But before we have that small time trouble, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that we can participate in that loud cry. So that when that small time of trouble spoken in Revelation 13, in which the, the, the worship of the beast, the image to the beast and the image of the beast will be uh, formed. And that this nation we call uh, America will form the image of the beast and speak like a dragon. Then the mark of the beast. Sunday law will be uh, promulgated by law and that will be the start of the small time. That's when we will proclaim the gospel message, when we proclaim the three angels' message to those that are still in the Babylonian uh, churches, those that have been uh, followers of mystery, mystery Babylon. Then, we have that close probation after that, which is the great time of trouble. The early rain germinates the seed of the gospel in your heart, whereas the latter rain ripens the harvest. So if you don't receive, if you haven't received the early rain, God will not also give you the latter rain. Why? Because it's illogical for him because there's nothing to harvest anyway. And that's why we need to be baptized now. With that early rain, power of the Holy Spirit, there must be a revival and reformation they were brought about by that early rain experience so that it prepares us for that latter rain, that final harvest of souls before Christ will come. The baptism of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost will lead to a revival of true religion and to the performance of many wonderful works. If we study our Adventist understanding of uh, last day events, it's, it, it, it means again, it's, it tells us there that we'll be those that will be uh, perform, practicing, I mean, uh, preaching, I mean, the, the gospel message will be performing miracles. Miracles after miracles, like in the days of the apostles. God's promise to an answer to our prayer of being filled and the infilling of the Holy Spirit is found in Isaiah 65, 24, before they call, I will answer. Well, they are still speaking. I will hear. What a promise for each one of us. And so the watch words for Adventists is this. Wait, watch, and work. While we wait for the soon return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we watch unto prayer. We are not only to pray for our souls. We are not only to pray for our families, but to, to pray for those that we labor for. And as we watch unto prayer, we work actively. Witnessing. Number three, the last 
reformation, your God-given sanctity. And I, Christ said, John 12, 32, If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. It is not only by preaching, listen now, the truth, not only by distributing literature that we are to witness for God. Let us remember that a Christ-like life is the most powerful argument that can advance, that can be advanced in favor of Christianity. A loving and a lovable Christian life, Ellen White says, is the best argument. That no critics could really refute a loving and lovable Christian life. Yes, we give Bible studies. Yes, we 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 distribute pamphlets. We we give lessons, Bible lessons to our friends. But you must have to experience a Christ-like life, so that what you say is being substantiated, but by how we live or how you live. A cheap Christian character works more harm in the world than the character of a worldly. Men will believe not what the minister preaches, listen now, but what the church leaves. Too often the influence of the sermon preached from the pulpit is counteracted by the sermon preached in the lives of those who claim to be advocates of truth. So that's why we need a reformation. And that's why we need a revival so that we can have a reformation because it's the, only, the, the Holy Spirit that gives us that revival and reformation it is the holy spirit that can transform us that's why uh, we we are we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling but praise the lord is not only working out let me read that in in, in philippians chapter 2 it says therefore my beloved as she have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yes, I will work out, but praise the Lord. The good news is he works in first so that I can work out. Praise God. Praise God. To do, he says, work in both to will and to do of his own pleasure. The light of the Son of Righteousness is to shine forth in good works, in words of truth and deeds of holiness. Oh, Christ Object Lesson 416. Dwight L. Moody has this to say again. Before we pray that God would fill us, I believe we ought to pray to Him to empty us. Yes, it is only when we are emptied of self, when we are emptied of uh, self-sufficiency, of a uh, holier-than-thou attitude, when self is being crucified, when, when, when we are to deny ourselves, we surrender to Him. That God can fill us. Why? Because he cannot fill something that is already filled with all of this wickedness, this evil surmising, this covetousness, this selfishness, this self-centeredness. It must, myself, yourself, your heart, you must be emptied, emptied of self. You must have to surrender and to submit to his will so that he can have that infilling of the Holy Spirit. Charles Spurgeon says, Again, he says, God is too good to be unkind, and he is too wise to be mistaken. And when we cannot trace his hand, we must trust his heart. I think it was also being sang, put into him, these words. We do know, listen now, really beloved, that this is a time when we must watch unto prayer, for the great day of the Lord is at hand. Because remember, revival and reformation is only being provided to us in answer to prayer. We tend to use prayer as a last resort, Chambers says again. But God wants it to be our first line of defense. We pray when there is nothing else we can do. But God wants us to pray before we do anything at all. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, he says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And that's why in our 10 days of prayer, we've been doing this uh, united prayer. We got the adoration, we got the confession, we got the supplication, and we got also the thanksgiving. Yes, it is an attitude of prayer. Not only praying for our uh, 
physical health, but we are praying for our spiritual well-being. Why? Because the spirituality in our Christian life sometimes is questionable. The sanctity, the holiness in our life is sometimes questionable. We've got to experience revival and reformation in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the essence of the Great Gospel Commission is this. Go, show, and tell. Let us not take for granted this God-given privilege of being co-laborers with Jesus Christ in His vineyard. As we go, show, and tell of the good news of salvation, what's this now? We are empowered by the Holy Spirit and we are strengthened by prayer. And lastly, we exalt Jesus Christ in our Christ-like character. And Paul says in Ephesians 6, uh, verses 10 to 9, speaking about the, the whole armor of God, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes, he did, didn't say part of the armor of God, but it's the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Yes, we got all of this around us in society, in high places, it says here. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able, he, he repeated that, whole armor of God, he says, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand in the evil day that I would like to say in the context of closing uh, events in world history, it is the fulfillment of Revelation 13 when the mark of the beast will be uh, clear to people when the seal of God will be clear to people when the sealing will end. And before that, we've got to be in the whole armor of God. And having done all, he says, to stand, stand therefore, having your loins geared about with truth. What's now? And having on the breastplate of righteousness, praise the Lord, that's the righteousness of Jesus Christ put on us. Because the three angels' message, Ellen White says, is the righteousness of Christ in verity. Not my own filthy rags of righteousness, my good works, even though how good they are, they are still filthy rags before the Lord. Fifteen, and your feet shared with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that's evangelism. Not only in our own Christian life, in the silent witness of our life, but in active participation, giving Bible studies. Especially now in this technology, technology that we have. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yes, our faith has been uh, threatened. Our faith has been shaken out. Our faith has been uh, uh, tested in this crisis that we are in with this pandemic. But praise the Lord, the best is yet to come. We are not saying that the condition of this world will be better. No. Perilous times spoken in Second Timothy is where we are heading. And that's why we ain't seen anything yet. <laughs> and above all, taking the shield of faith. But we walk by faith, not by sight. Where we ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. And then he says, praying always, praying always. We don't want only to participate in the 10 days of prayer, the 40 days of prayer, <coughs> or whatnot. We've got to be in that praying attitude, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance. Yes, we have a persevering faith and we got also a persevering prayer agonizing, persevering prayer and supplication for all saints. Yes, we intercede for our church. We intercede for our own church family. We intercede for the world. We intercede for leaders, not only in our own organization, but even world leaders. And for me, Paul says to the efficient uh, brethren, efficient church, pray for me too. And I would like to ask you also to pray for me. Pray for our Zoom Bible studies. We started a Zoom Bible study just within our 10 days of prayer. And after these 10 days of prayer, tonight we'll be 
will be resuming our international Bible seminar and one of our elders will be leading out Brother Adi. And we will be closing out. There will still be two uh, of these 28 fundamental beliefs that we are to finish. And then we have our completion and we have our graduation. And I'm inviting a guest speaker during that graduation ceremony that we have via Zoom. And so if you were perfect, if you were attending this International Bible Seminar, email us in the website so that we can prepare you a certificate of completion. But the, 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 the certificate is not that important. What is important is those 28 fundamental beliefs that we have studied has strengthened your faith in Jesus Christ, has even given you that uh, the deeper understanding, that clearer understanding that what we believe as a church are all in the Bible. And so Paul says, and for me, that a terrence may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Yes, pray for me, dearly beloved, that I can speak boldly the mystery of the gospel that has been shown to us and manifested to us, demonstrated to us by Jesus coming to bear our sins at Calvary's cross so that we can have life everlasting. And we need to share this to others. Beloved, as we close this message for today, listen now. Through prayer, we talk with Jesus Christ, our friend, our elder brother, our everlasting father, our great high priest, our defense lawyer, our good and loving shepherd, our provider, our healer, our refuge, our savior and Lord, our soon coming king of kings and Lord of lords. And when we pray to God, we should be persistent. This is persevering prayer. Yes, prevailing, agonizing prayer that keeps on asking, keeps on seeking, and keeps on knocking. Yeah, persevering prayer that changes us, that changes me, that changes you. Trusting more in God's will and His guidance. And may God be with us. That even though we are done now with this 10 days of prayer, we are still to continue on in our attitude of prayer. And so that God will give to us the infilling of the Holy Spirit so that we can experience revival and reformation in the Spirit through earnest, penitent, prevailing, persevering prayer. May the Lord help us and make us in that revival and reformation. And if there is a revival and reformation, as a church, and as an individual, let it be that our prayer is, Lord, let it begin in me. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are touched today with the heavy statement, not only coming from your word, but even coming from your servant, Sister Hawaii. And may as your people now, as members of the remnant church, that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, will move on in our Christian journey. Because the call is a higher and higher and higher. Higher than the highest human thoughts can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness, Christ-likeness, is the goal to be reached. Make us one, dear Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us so that we can work out the praises of Him who called us from darkness into His marvelous light. This is our prayer. And may God's people say, Amen and Amen. On behalf of our church, the Metropolitan Seventh-day Adventist Church, we would like to thank our international audience who have been with us through our virtual Sabbath school program, even until now. And I believe that God has blessed you in a special way. And so I would like to invite you again next Sabbath as we join together our hearts and our minds in worship and in praises and adoration to the one who had loved us so much, the one that has called us from the darkness of this world into his marvelous light, the gospel of Jesus Christ. See you again and take care. 
Be safe. God's blessings be all yours in His guidance. Constantly be your experience. Is my prayer.